Tonight, CBS 4 Investigates continues an in-depth look at human trafficking. Politicians in the state of Florida often boast about their efforts to crack down on this modern form of slavery. That's Attorney General Pam Bondi. She ran campaign commercials promising to put the monsters, as she called them, behind bars. But do the results match all the hype? To answer this question, CBS 4 News partnered with the Florida Center for Investigative Reporting to look beyond the rhetoric and to examine the numbers. Here's CBS 4 investigator Jim DeFeedy. If a girl works in Wendy's and I take care of all the responsibilities and she hands me her money, am I pimping her? She handed me all her money, am I pimping her? Am I though? Alexander Valdez, known by the street name Daddy A Plus, is in fact a pimp. He operated A-plus photography and A-plus escorts, where men paid at least $150 to women to entertain them in a motel room for 30 minutes. They could do like a body rub, they could do a sexy dance, they could do the little flirt thing, you know, keep the company happy, you know. With a kid that be, there is no bond, sir. But Valdez is currently here in the state prison in South Bay, serving an 18-year sentence for kidnapping and forcing a woman into prostitution. In recent years, the Florida legislature has passed a half a dozen new laws, supposedly making it easier to convict human traffickers like Valdez. They even created a statewide council on human trafficking. And this is our logo, and we, we all seem to we love it. Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi chairs the council. And if you notice, the chains of human trafficking are broken, and that's what our goal is by, um, by forming this task force. Unfortunately, breaking the chains of human trafficking on a logo is a lot easier than doing it for real. CBS 4 News and the Florida Center for Investigative Reporting spent months reviewing the efforts of police and prosecutors across Florida. Our review found that Valdez is just one of 24 individuals in prison for sex trafficking in the state of Florida. Bondi provided us a list of all the human trafficking related cases handled by her office. Of the 14 defendants that had been convicted and sentenced, Three were given no jail time at all and were instead just granted probation. Eight of the defendants were sentenced to five years or less in prison, with the shortest sentence being 21 days in jail. Just three of those sentenced were given prison terms longer than five years. In Miami-Dade County, the results are slightly better. State Attorney Catherine fernandez Rundle has made human trafficking prosecutions one of her office's highest priorities. But even her numbers feel like a drop in a very large ocean. Rundo identified for us 250 cases her office has handled. By early 2015, only 36 of those defendants went to prison, often on lesser charges. And at least a third of the cases were dropped or dismissed. Susanna Nesmith from the Florida Center for Investigative Reporting and I sat down with Rundo to discuss the numbers. Of the cases that you've t your office has had, only 19% have gone to prison. You know, and that, that is really the great challenge and the great sadness because what it tells you is that our victims are very traumatized. They're very elusive. Who exactly is a victim is also a question, as Rundle has been criticized for prosecuting adult prostitutes. Activists say that the vast majority of prostitutes that are out on the street are being trafficked. They're victims. Well, you know, I wish those advocates would pick up the phone and call me and tell me exactly which women they're talking about and which streets, because I haven't gotten any of those phone calls. Do you doubt what they say, that most of the women out there are victims of some sort of as, form of trafficking? As I said to you, I'm not sure. Mm. Well, so, okay, so a lot of questions here. First of all, she's saying that the victims are so traumatized and that is what prevents them from testifying that, that could put these people away for longer sentences? Correct. That's one of the main things is that the victims are traumatized and they're very, you know, a lot of these women come out of these human traffic situations still bonding to their, to their kidnapper. Oh. You know, they, want, they think of them as their boyfriend because it's the only person who showed them love. That's why one of the things that really needs to happen, if, among the many things that could happen, is there needs to be more of a focus on providing support services to the victims. We do a great job in Tallahassee of trying to crack down on the criminal side of things, but when it comes to providing the resources to give support to these women who need it so that they can turn around and then testify right. against their attackers, that's where it's lacking. And that costs a lot of money, though. That's the rub. You know, if you want to really crack down, if you want to make human trafficking a high priority in the state, you got to put some money behind it as well. All right. Well, I'm glad that you're talking about this, and we'll continue to follow the story of human trafficking, which is such a major problem here in Florida and around the country. Jim, thank you very much.